Well, good evening, everyone. It's Carol Ford here, and we are going to get started with our monthly huddle. Here we are, Monday, September the 25th, and we have a lot of information to share with you here tonight, and I even have a co-pilot with me. It's wonderful when I have somebody else speaking as well, because it kind of gives my voice a, a break, and it's great for you to hear other voices as well. So if you are ever interested in sharing on these uh, huddle webinars, please send me a note, because it's great to have other people uh, sharing on here as well. So so um, without further ado, let me just move right forward here because we have a lot of information to share with you and I don't want to uh, uh, lose out on uh, having our guest speaker, Diane, share it with her material. And so let me just get started with the preliminary things that we have here. And open forum takes place at the end of our time here. Every month we open it up. For anyone who may have questions or recommendations, comments, it's open forum. Nothing is, is a stupid question, as some people say, or nothing is too, uh, too simple, too little, or too big. And so bring your questions, your comments, your conversation piece that you would like us to address after the webinar. And so that is staying on after the webinar is officially over. Anyone who would like to stay on for that. Okay, all right, what is new? What are the updates that we'd like to share with you here this evening? Let's have a look at some of those. If my slide will behave here. Okay, here we go, Regal Catalogs. All right, as you know, we're in issue four right now, and the focus is on getting ready for Christmas. So it's about Christmas ornaments for the homes, it's fall and winter products that you can still take care of your, your gardening and get ready for the winter, and there's a lot of gift ideas in issue four as well. Um, prices for issue four will stay in effect until middle of December, so all of your Christmas shopping, you'll have issue four as well as issue five. Issue five, the focus is Christmas gifting, and it's more gift ideas. So I am so excited with all the things that we are bringing into that catalog. I had a look at it last week a couple of times as, as it was progressing, and I am very impressed with what we're bringing in and how the uh, catalog is just looking so amazing with the large pictures, less white space, all of the things that you've been asking for. So uh, marketing is doing a terrific job. Uh, Pre-ordering time for issue 5 starts this Wednesday, September the 27th, and will go for a full week until October the 4th. So for those of you that are new to Regal, welcome aboard. Um, Pre-ordering means that you get to purchase catalogs at a reduced price during that time that we are um, allowing you to order it before the catalogs are actually uh, printed. And the reason we allow for that discount is because we want you to really gauge how much you need by way of catalogs for the period of time that it's going to be in effect and then add some because you do not want to run out of catalogs, especially right now in the biggest selling season of the year. And so this pre-ordering time gives you an opportunity to purchase catalogs in three different ways. And on Wednesday, you will receive an email as well as post it on Facebook book what those three ways are and how to actually order them how it's done and what the cost is and all of that will be included in the email and in the uh, Facebook post now a new policy with regards to pre-ordering period there will be no products attached to any catalog orders okay um, more on that with a, a message that I'm bringing to you here this evening Okay, release is expected by November the 1st. That means we expect it to be fully printed and ready to start shipping to you. And so that date is November the 1st. And so um, you're going to want to gauge your, your amount of catalogs that you have right now. We still have issue four catalogs available. Get more on hand so that you have plenty. You're not running out from now until November 1st. And you don't want to be caught with us selling out of issue four either and, and having no catalogs to carry you on until uh, the end of December or middle of December. So prices for the issue 5 will be in effect until middle of January, at which time we will be introducing issue 1 of year 2018. 
Okay, let's talk about who are we. You know, there were a lot of uh, comments on Facebook with regards to what issue four is and the pricing of the ornaments, the pricing of uh, the pajamas, um, all of that kind of information. And were we uh, waiting too long to bring out issue five and all of that? And, you know, I really believe in, in addressing those issues just straightforward because it's important for you to have the right answers. It's important for you to have the uh, the information that will help you to, to just spur uh, forward in your regal business. So let's address some of the things that were talked about in the um, in the Facebook with regards to these things. Okay, so let me just say first of all, thank you all who give feedback on Facebook with regards to anything. We really love to hear from you. It's the best way for us to gauge what is happening and what's not happening, where you're happy and where you're not happy. And so we always encourage that if you're not happy, the best place to uh, vocalize that is with us privately. So send me or Irene a private message on Facebook, or you can email us or call us any time and we would love to hear any concerns that you have so we can help to rectify that okay so it's always great to hear from the ambassadors so we can consider whether to make changes and, and so on and so forth so first of all let's consider who we are what does regal represent what does regal mean as you can see on the screen regal means magnificent dignified fit for royal royalty well, doesn't that describe us? Absolutely, right? So let's have a look at our image. What is the image that Regal wants to have? You know, what is it that you want to have um, people think of when they think Regal, when they think of you being attached to Regal? You know, our image is to have quality products, unique products, and to have a dignified and well, reputable uh, company that you are standing behind. Okay, so the name and the definition and the uh, company should all be in sync, and I believe that we are. I believe that we are doing a great job of living up to that name. Well, we need to take that even further um, than just, you know, the image or the reputation or, um, you know, what you're... Uh, verbalizing out there in your community we also want it to be reflected in our products so there are plenty of products for everyone and so one of the concerns that we hear every now and then on Facebook is that um, the prices are too high the customers are not buying because they're saying that the prices are too high and yet we continue to um, to communicate the fact that our products, our average price of products in the catalog is only $17, okay? Now, that is very reasonable. That means that there are many products that are under the 17 amount, and there are many that are over that amount. So you can pique the interest of many people, those that have the limited budget and those that have more discretionary money. So there are many... Um, people that you can tap into and, and provide them with the lower end products, but there are also many people that will buy the higher end ones. So there, as I say, are plenty of lower priced items in the Regal catalog. That's evident by the fact that we have this average price of products. Now, I don't buy the theory that everyone is struggling financially right now, because when I go to the mall, I see people buying and I see people um, even purchasing cars and homes and, and all kinds of things. There are people out there who are spending money and they are interested in the higher priced items because they have that discretionary money. So let me just say, you know, when you look at the pajamas in the catalog, for instance, as an example, yes, the, uh, the one set of pajamas is $42. Well, that is not intended to be pajamas necessarily for you and I to buy. It's more of like a gift item. Um, I would personally buy them, um, but, you know, it's really so that you can present them to your customers as a great gift idea for those people on their Christmas list list who really appreciate quality so it's not your Walmart kind of pajamas okay and yet I as I said on the Facebook the other day I was in a, a little specialty shop the other day and the little itsy bitsy teeny weeny little pajama set was $48 there was next to nothing to it and yet it was $48 well that was just one out of many on the wrap so obviously they sell those at those prices or else they wouldn't still be in business and so there are people who go to specialty shops and look for that kind of quality item as for themselves or as a gift. So think of those items in the catalog that are in the higher range as being great gift ideas 
for individuals because you know what people do spend typically forty dollars or more on gifts for Christmas for their loved ones especially when they're looking to buy something that is extra special now let's talk about the uh, the lower end gift ideas that are in the catalog what about those ornaments have you seen that cucumber what a cute idea you know encourage your customers to start a tradition and to uh, encourage their families to start the tradition and, and get that cucumber on their tree every year um, um, you know, in other ornaments, you know, those ornaments, we've heard individuals say, well, those ornaments are too costly. My customers say that they're too costly. They can just go to the dollar store and buy them or Walmart. And, and they're absolutely right. If they're looking for ornaments to dress up their whole Christmas tree, they might as well go and get those bulk boxes of ornaments to do that. But on your tree, I don't know about you, but on my tree, there are the odd ornaments that are very meaningful to me because I've collected them over the years. They were either gifted to me or I picked them up at some special uh, location. And so that's the kind of ornaments that you have in the catalog right now. So encourage your customers to see them as gifts for the people on their gift list. And they will remember them every Christmas when they're putting that decoration out. You know, what about those personalized ornaments? What a great gift that makes. Okay, so yes, we do have a, a variety of various prices in the catalog, and so there's lots for your customers to choose from. Issue five is an add-on Christmas shopping. So no, it's not coming out too late because they're actually shopping right now. Those that are doing their Christmas shopping early, if you consider this early, um, you know, they can shop in September and October with issue four because there are a lot of gift ideas in there. And you should be marking your catalog with uh, sticky notes on ideas for your customers on what makes really great gift ideas. And then when issue five comes, you're going to have either those that are last minute shoppers or those that already got all their shopping done. But hey, even those that get shopping done early. They're tempted at the last minute to pick up this and that because they see something else. And so, and how many parties do we go to? How many uh, festivities are there over the Christmas holidays? And you feel obliged to bring a little gift. A nice ornament would be a great gift to bring. So issue five will have a lot of extra Christmas shopping ideas for all of your customers. So really what it boils down to, and I've said this many times in the Facebook responses, it really boils down to your own belief. Do you believe in the product? Do you believe in the catalog? Do you believe in the company? And do you believe in yourself? And when you have the belief that um, exudes the, the passion behind what you are representing, your customers will catch on. It's contagious. Okay, you'll be able to share with them with much enthusiasm. So if you're feeling like mm, the catalog's not quite there yet or the prices aren't right or you know whatever the uh, uh, objection may be in your own mind, that will come through with your customers as well because you're giving them that message subliminally or perhaps even verbally. And so just a word of caution as you go forward in this season. This is the best selling season of the year. I want you to do amazingly well. So let's see how we can do that by making sure the catalog and the products are well represented. And then seek new customers. You know, for some of you, you have customers that have been with you for decades and they may be tired of buying, okay, or they may not have the discretionary money that they once had. And so look for new customers and customers that would be at the different ranges for your, your prices in the catalog. We're going to talk a little bit more about where you can find those customers. So this is the season that can enable you to achieve all of those qualifications that you need to achieve by year end in order for you to keep your status level. So make this season the best season of all so that you can reach those qualifications. Now just a, a little uh, side tip there as you've seen at the bottom of your screen as I was speaking, the final September orders need to be submitted no later than Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. OK, because we need to have one or two business days internally to process those orders and ship them out. So you are not paid on commission unless they ship out. So get your orders in no later than Wednesday at 5 p.m. And hopefully all of the products will be in for your orders and you can get commission on the complete order. OK. All right, a reminder on what you need before December 31st. I've done this in the last two or three webinars, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. 250 to remain active, 
Um, in order to receive commission in 2018, you must have sold at least $250 in the year 2017. For those that are coming in from now until the end of the year, we take into account that you have less time. Your qualification is 150, which is what we've always said as uh, 150 in a 90-day period. Okay, minimum year to date accumulated product sales. That's all of your sales since you started with Regal this year. Um, if you are in whatever range are showing here, um, that's the commission that you're entitled to. So if you are right now a bronze um, status level, but you have not yet reached $500 in accumulated sales, you're going to want to make sure you get $500 at least by the end of December so that you will keep that 15% commission. And the same applies for all the levels. If you are at platinum and you have not yet um, reached the year-to-date accumulated product sales of $5,000, you need to get it topped up to that by December 31st in order to keep your 30% commission going into the new year. Now, we are allowing you to keep your name, your status title, um, for an additional year because of the way that we all got started in, in steps um, in 2017. So you're holding on to that title even if your commission needs to drop to um, reflect what uh, sales you accomplished throughout 2017. So let's say you're silver and you didn't make the thousand in that um, full 2017 sales. Let's say you were at 900, you didn't make it at a thousand. Hey, Go out there and get another couple of orders. You don't want to miss it out, miss out on it. But just as an example, if you are silver and you miss that thousand mark, then you will go down to the other level. You'll go down to fifteen percent, which is where the sales were for you. But your title of silver will remain the same, and you will have the full year of two thousand and eighteen to hold on to that title. Okay. All right. Everybody starts back at zero January 1. So every year it, it resets to zero and you're starting all over again as far as counting your accumulated product sales. If you have any questions on any of this, drop me an email or put it in the question box and we'll address it during our um, discussion time at the end of this webinar. Okay. So make the most of this season. September, December is the best selling season of the year. Don't miss out on this opportunity to top up. Okay, here are many ways in which you can find new customers. And so look at the list. You might want to even snapshot it with your uh, telephone camera so that you have it in front of you when we're discussing later. Um, because if you want any more information on how to do any of these, we will cover that during our open forum. So the fundraising and the party plan program is in swing. The pilot projects are applying them, and we are tweaking it as we go forward. So um, there are those two items uh, that you can look at for acquiring new customers and a whole lot more on the list. So if there's any of those that you'd like more information, we'll talk about it later. Okay, 21-day challenge. October 1st, you will find on your Regal Academy, which is the uh, place where we have uh, videos stored for uh, primarily for the new ambassadors because it's the very basic videos and then it directs them to YouTube to see the rest of what is recorded and saved. And so uh, as of October 1st, you will be able to do the 21 day challenge right from the Regal Academy. So we suggest that you watch the, se the sessions at a time that is convenient for you where you, there is no distraction. You are able to spend time just focusing on watching the one hour session. Okay. And then there are assignments that go with each of the sessions. So we recommend that you do one session per week and complete the assignment for that week before you go on and watch the second week. Okay. We also suggest that you have a buddy doing this program with you. Find another ambassador who also wants to go through the 21-day challenge, and that person will be able to keep you accountable, and you'll be able to encourage one another. And so find somebody that wants to do it at the same time as you. You watch it in your own time, in your own homes, and then you come together to discuss what you've learned and how you're going to apply it before you uh, watch the next session. Okay, assistance is always available by email, private message, and phone as you're going through this 21-day challenge. So we have offered this 21-day challenge twice now. We have graduates from the May class and from the July class, and they are um, 
expressing the fact that their business is doing much better since they've done the 21 day challenge because they've learned some new habits or they've been refreshed on habits that they knew they should be implementing and that they weren't. And so there is um, an element of this 21 day challenge that will actually um, give you that nudge, give you that push, if you will, to, uh, to do the things that will count, to get the disciplines in place, the habits in place, and to be able to uh, apply what you're learning from one session to the next into your business immediately and see the changes. So we are going to congratulate some of the, gra the graduates later on this evening for what they have accomplished through the 21-day May Challenge. All right, a new program that we've been announcing to you is called Unstoppable Me. And this is for graduates of the 21-day program. So once you've completed the 21-day challenge, you can join us for a four-week advanced training program. And it is a four-week webinar. On the webinar, we will be discussing what you have been receiving on a weekly basis and on a daily basis. So this is a little bit different from your 21-day challenge. You're going to receive daily recorded lessons, just short, brief messages and affirmations that you will start to implement into your business. And along with that message is an assignment. And so you will continue to do that throughout the week, and then we'll come together once a week and just debrief on what you've been learning. And, and how it's been going. So this will also instill the practices of direct selling professionals and it will take your business to a whole different level if you allow it to and if you implement that which is taught in the program. All right, so this program does begin in October. It begins October the 19th and will run through to November the 9th. It, if you want to register for it, you have until the end of this week um, to send us an email at ambassadors at regal.ca and say, sign me up for Unstoppable Me. You need to indicate that you did the 21-day challenge, whether you did it in May or July or if you're going to fast track and, and, and do the other, well, you don't even have that opportunity right now because it won't be online until October 1st. So this is really this time around for just the graduates of those two uh, classes, the May and the July. Okay, so let us know if you'd like to um, get started with that. I already have several of you registered for it. And next week you'll be receiving, um, actually it's probably by the end of this week because I'm on vacation next week, um, but you'll receive the start of the program. It's uh, an exercise that you need to do in preparation for the start of it. Okay, all right. New developments. Let me share with you some information that Fred wanted to share with you all. Things that we're working on on the inside and things that uh, need to change. So let me just talk about first the shipping methods. Okay, These are things that we need to change. And uh, this is the, um, if I had to say one of these was uh, less positive than the other, it's probably this one. But I think it's positive in the sense that it is going to be beneficial to you and to us. And as you know, Regal always operates on the principle of making decisions that are good for the company and for the ambassadors. If it's only good for one or the other, it's going to hurt us all in the end. So this shipping is actually because we needed to make some changes to make it beneficial for all of us, you and the corporate. So we implemented, this is uh, Fred's message to you, okay, about the shipping. We implemented a test earlier this year with respect to shipping. Specifically, we tried out two new features that did not exist previously. Ship with an existing order and ship with a future order. While these two options seemed like excellent ideas on paper, in practice they were far from ideal. Introducing these options created a tremendous amount of other problems internally and did not provide a great customer experience for many people. Let me explain. Some ambassadors were going overboard with the linking of orders. They would place three to five orders at a time and sometimes on the same day and then ask that they all be linked. This created a huge bottleneck at the verification station in the warehouse and brought operations to a standstill. While people were off looking for other half-picked orders or not picked orders, etc., Hugely time-consuming, and it resulted in less things being shipped daily. Also, some ambassadors didn't understand the process and tried to link new orders to past orders that didn't even exist any longer, which in doing so, they attempted to not pay shipping on anything. 
It also made a mess of the capture of invoices and made accounting difficult for everyone. Further, orders were sitting around for days and days, which does not provide a good customer experience and it delayed commissions. Overall, with this process causing such a mess now, I can't imagine what it would cause when the real push of Christmas orders begin. So, in short, this test was not successful. Therefore, in the interest of simplicity and providing the best customer experience, we are discontinuing the practice of ship with existing order, ship with previous order, effective immediately tomorrow. This is also the case with shipping pre-ordered catalogs with products. We had orders picked and sitting here for three or four weeks. That is a terrible customer experience to offer, to have those orders sitting for three or four weeks while waiting for catalogs. Having to ship those 800 orders that wanted products to go with catalogs actually paralyzed the warehouse for days. While we pulled staff from every department and worked weekends, this is not sustainable going forward as we grow together. So this process will have to return to the way it was done in the past with all pre-ordered catalogs being shipped from the printer. This change is effective for issue five and will speed up by days the delivery of the catalogs to our ambassadors. Now a note to those of you who are local, Local ambassadors can still request pickup of pre-ordered catalogs, but cannot combine them with products, and will need to wait a day or two for the catalogs to arrive in-house and to be sorted through. Okay, all right, so that's the change that we have with regards to shipping. The next item that I'd like to uh, share with you is the commission payout, and again, this is a message from Fred. While processing of commissions should be simple, it clearly has not been. Over one third of our active ambassadors have been unable to protect or to provide correct banking information to corporate. We have spent countless hours reaching out to hundreds of people for corrections and to no avail. We are spending huge amounts of time recording bounced payments, commission adjustments, etc. The whole thing is a mess because we just can't seem to obtain accurate information from some of the ambassadors. So we are exploring a new system, and that's very exciting. A, site, a system used by many of the other direct selling companies, which will streamline the payment process and give you many more options to manage your commission the way you want to. We are still evaluating this new system but it looks very promising and you will love the flexibility that it gives you. The implementation of this new system could be as quick as the next 45 to 60 days, depending on further review. We will keep you informed on the development of this new system. So I have been meeting with Fred and the outsource with this system and I have to tell you it is very impressive and you will be very pleased with it. Okay, let's talk about this item too because this is something that I've also been involved in with Fred and uh, another company. So we know that you were expecting a much more robust back office and business tool when Regal Home and Gifts first launched the current Regal.ca website. We heard your voice. We know that you were saying you wanted more. We've heard you and we are exploring a new software that would provide the state of the art back office, website, and so much more. While we are at the beginning of this review, we are so impressed with the functionality of the back office and the flexibility it offers you to manage your business that we know you are going to be very thrilled. This software is used by tons of direct selling companies and the reviews from both sales reps and head offices are outstanding. This new back office will allow you to email your customers, push marketing materials to social media, update your own customer list and your personal information, see your current status level and how far you are from the next one, what your commission payment will be in the upcoming commission run, and so, so much more. It will offer greater insight into what your customers are buying. It also has other benefits such as party plan functionality for those who are implementing that marketing strategy in their regal business, to keep track of what rewards your hosts have earned, etc., etc. 
Again, we are at the beginning phase of this project and it would take two to three months to review the options in the marketplace and then another three to four months to implement a solution. However, we wanted to know that we wanted you to know that we are listening. We are working on ways to tremendously improve the back office system and we hope to have something great in place for you in the early part of 2018. So as Fred says, happy selling this Christmas season. So folks, I have to tell you, it is very exciting what we're looking at and I know that you are going to be very impressed because it is going to be like state of the art. We're going to be up there with what the big companies in direct sales are providing for their distributors. So um, we'll keep you informed. We'll let you know as this continues to develop and um, give you the information you need in time. All right. At this point, I am going to have Diane... Uh, Comstock join us and she is going to share um, why it's so important for you to keep record of your business um, information and whatnot. So I am just looking for you, Diane, so that I can flip you to the presenter screen. Okay, so Diane, are you there? I'm here. Excellent. Okay. Are you ready for me to uh, go ahead and make you the presenter? I hope so. <laughs> okay, here it comes. <laughs> okay, can everybody see my screen? We, we can, it looks great. Okay, so it's the right screen, eh, Cara? It is. <laughs> okay. All right, so um. Carol asked me to speak about record keeping, how I do it in my regal business. Um, just a disclaimer, this webinar is not is for information only, and in no way am I asking you to uh, use this information to uh, maintain your business records. Some people already have great systems in place, that's fine, and some people are relatively new and so may like some of this information. So what is record keeping? Definition is the maintenance of a history of one's activities as financial dealings by entering data in ledgers or journals and putting documents in files, etc. Business records which must be kept include documents which provide a record of your business transactions or which enable these transactions to be traced and verified through an accounting system from start to finish. These can include invoices, receipts, uh, cash register tapes, which we don't have, banking records, etc. Now, for the tax man, you must keep records for six years from the end of the last company financial year that they relate to, or longer if they show a transaction that covers more than one of your com company's accounting periods. So, if you have a sale at the end of the year, but you didn't get paid for it till the beginning of the year, you've got to keep that extra, that data for an extra year. Um, the benefits of record keeping. Um, most of us will be using the business form T2125 and for Quebec residents it's uh, TP-80-V. Um, financial summary reports that you can generate by uh, keeping your um, record keeping up to date will help you immensely to help fill out these tax forms. And um, keeping track of your income and your expenses can actually improve your chances of making a profit. So like I said, it can help with decision making uh, by looking at what you've got and what you uh, hope to uh, sell, you can determine whether or not you can afford uh, an expense like a, um, an event or something like that. Now what's important? Commissions. Well, it's good to uh, keep uh, track of what you're expecting in your commission so you can balance your expectations with your regal report. And um, personal orders and customer orders, the, I break these down into two because if you're using inventory, which I am, your personal orders are not included in your cost of goods sold and uh, could possibly be used for a future tax rebate. So it's good to keep track of 
what you've sold for yourself and what you've sold for your customers. Business expenses, really should keep a track of that. All your non-commissional purchases, such as your uh, catalogs, office supplies, your car mileage, your long distance telephone calls. Um, if you make any of those, then yeah, those are a business expense and you should be keeping track of it. Um, inventory, as I said, I do inventory. Not everybody does inventory, but inventory is your total order amount, your sales amount, plus your shipping and handling, plus your taxes, and minus the commission. And that's what you actually paid for the product. And lastly, a summary of all your sales and expenditures. If you have a summary on a monthly basis at least, you can see your current bottom line at any given time. Uh, why wait to the end of the year to create your summary? You need to know it all at the beginning. I do it on a, on a weekly basis. The process. <coughs> process of record keeping. Whether you do your accounting by hand on ledger sheets or use accounting software, these principles are exactly the same. Each of your business sales and purchases must be backed by some type of record containing the amount, the date, and any other relevant information about that item. From a legal point of view, your method of keeping the receipts can range from slips kept in a cigar box to a sophisticated cash register hooked into a computer system. Practically, you'll want to create a system, choose a system that fits your business needs. A completed ledger is really nothing more than a summary of your revenue, your expenditures, and whatever else you're keeping track of. It's entered from your receipts according to a category and a date. So in your ledger, you would uh, record all of your sales, you would record all of your expenses. This can be done on paper, in spreadsheets, or even using an accounting software. On some regular basis, like every day, once a week, or at least once a month, you should transfer the amounts from your receipts into your ledger. This is called posting. How often you do this depends on how many sales and expenditures your business makes and how detailed you want your books to be. Financial record reports are important because they bring together several key pieces of financial information about your business. Think of it this way. While your income ledger may tell you that your business brought in a lot of money during the year, you won't know if you turned a profit without measuring your income against your total expenses. And even comparing your monthly totals of income and expenses won't tell you whether your credit customers are paying fast enough. So I don't know how about if everybody uh, has their uh, customers pay up front or if uh, you allow them to wait until you do a delivery, but that's where you could have what they call your credit customers are paying fast enough. Um, that's why you need financial reports to combine the data from your ledgers and sculpt it into a shape that shows you the big picture of your business. How to track your records. Well, there's the manual way, the ledger book, be ledger sheets in a binder, accounting journals. As long as the records produce an accurate accounting of income and expenses, you can choose the system that works best for you. When storing the paper receipts, keep the paper copies or even an electronic version. Hint, if you're relying on the regal invoices from your website for your sales, print off a copy, either to paper or to PDF as a backup. We all know what happened last year. So the financial reports, if you're doing it manually, will be created, you'll have to be totaling all the items from your ledger book to create your uh, balance sheets or your financial reports. If you're using a computerized system, your ledger book can be spreadsheets or it can be accounting software. Now I put a poll out on Facebook a month ago and it got some ideas of what uh, county software some of the ambassadors use. There's something called a Wave app, which was free. Wave accounting, which is also free. 
there's Simply Accounting and there's QuickBooks. There's probably other accounting softwares, but these were the four main ones that people uh, said they were using. The advantage of using a computerized is your financial reports can be generated by a click of a button. Now, this is the manual ledger. Everybody recognize that from years ago? Still valid. You can still use it. You have your dates. You have what kind of an item. Over here, you can mark down whether it was, what type of expense it was, whether it was business supplies, um, gas for the car, your sales, personal, or customer. And then if you're using the manual, when you want to do your financial reports, you would have to go in, into each one of these and total up the different categories. Now, this is what I use. I have a spreadsheet. I have a spreadsheet that has a lot of different tabs and um, formulas and linking from one tab to another. When I do my orders, every time I do an order, I enter it, whoops, how come it's not going? Hello, there, yeah, okay. Every time I do an order, the date, the order invoice, some type of information as to whether bulk order means I entered it, uh, web order means a customer entered it. And you here usually I put my customer name. And then I have my sales total, the total amount of the order, shipping and handling. Now, I'm fortunate enough to uh, live close to the warehouse, so a lot of times I go and pick up the orders and I uh, charge my customers a 6.5% shipping and handling. And they all seem to agree with that, so that's where this information is coming from. This is the taxes and the shipping paid to Regal. There are some times where I, uh, if it's like over $150, then I will have it shipped to myself. And then this is what is charged to the customer. And this is my expected profit. And I do um, give discounts. So here's some discounts that I might have given to a particular uh, client. Now, I also do some fundraising. And I keep it a little bit separated. So I know at a glance what I'm doing for the fundraising and what I'm doing for my own. And fundraising is exactly the same, except here it tells me which fundraiser this particular line item is for. And the only difference is profit, my profit and the fundraiser's profit. Um, again, I, um, because I am at, still at the 35%, at the and my fundraiser was somebody who had done it before in previous years. They were expecting the 30%. I left it at that point in time. Uh, so they get 30% and I get 5%. And here I tell them I have, if I've paid out the fundraising. Um, your expenses. You have different expenses. I have an auto expense. I'll talk to that in a few minutes. Here's my fundraising commission. So you saw the commissions when I paid out. It comes in here as an expense. This is my catalogs, Canada Postage, bought some things for trade show expenses, etc. So it's all there. And I have a little chart at the bottom that I can refresh every time I do a new expense. And this is good, great for me at the end of tax year. It tells me all of the uh, costs for the different types of expenses. Uh, mileage. Mileage, it tells me I have what I've, different mileages I've used, the catalog deliveries, the pickup from head office, and my gas, my oil changes, etc. for the car. So that's the expense. This is the total mileage I've used for Regal. And up above, this is the total for the year so far of the um, mileage on my car. So I took a mileage reading as of January 1st, 
and this is my current mileage rate, uh, um, subtracted my current mileage rate from my January 1st, and that means I've done 9,300 kilometers, sort of, and these, this 475 is the mileage I've done for Regal. So I'm allowed to char get 5% of my total auto expenses as a business expense. Commission reports. Every time I get a commission report from a Regal, I copy and paste it in here. I do a double check against the commissions that I expected and the commissions I received. A lot of times there's just one or two cents that's rounding, so then I will adjust uh, my spreadsheet to accommodate the rounding. And finally, there my summary. My summary is generated. I don't have to make any changes to it. As soon as I make a, an addition to orders or fundraising or record of expenses, it's showing here. So those are my total sales, both from the fundraisers and from my own um, sales. This sales revenue and the discounts is cost of goods sold is actually in another spreadsheet where I keep control of my inventory. So this gives me my gross profit. Then I have my expenses. That again is from this tab. And I have some fundraising commissions that they've earned, but I haven't paid out yet. So right now it looks like I'm in the red. Hopefully that's going to change. This, you'll notice too I have a start date. I'm telling you how many days. That's for down here. This actually spreadsheet is like, uh, I think, as of April. So um, what this here tells me, it helps me determine what I need to get to my next level. So I'm just sort of keeping track. I've got over $1,000 in sales, and I'm going to need $691 of sales to reach the next level. And I'm kind of keeping track of the dates to let me know how long it took me. These are my forecasts, uh, hoping to get to them at that, those dates. Then here I have a monthly snapshot of the sales, the expected commissions, my profit from events. These profit from events are when I sell my inventory at events. Now they're in the negative because I also give out uh, door prizes and uh, a lot of the events I go to uh, I'm asked to uh, donate an auction prize. So that is considered negative event profit. My shipment and handling, my expenses, my discounts. Excuse me. I have <coughs> Sorry. Um, and then I have the same thing for sales. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> and my commissions. <coughs> Oh, goodness. And that, fortunately, is the end of my, my presentation. <laughs> Just in time. Okay. All right. <laughs> Diane, thank you so much. I really appreciate the time that you've taken to put this together. And, and I know, like, as you said, it's... Uh, it's uh, from your first few months with us up until April. And so thank you so much for... Um, let me just get my screen back up here and let Diane get her breath back. <laughs> Are you okay there, hon? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. I'm going to mute myself. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Well, um, let me just say that, uh, Diane, you've done a great job. I really appreciate everything you've done to put that together. And uh, I should have introduced you properly before I handed it over to you. But um, just so that everyone else is aware, especially those that don't know you yet, um, Diane Comstock is a Diamond Ambassador with Regal. She's been with Regal for a long time, and she is very active on Facebook. She helps with answering questions all the time. And so um, you, if you're on Facebook, you know 
doubt know the name Diane Comstock, and now you've just heard from her. And so um, Diane is very organized. I've gotten to know that as I've worked with her. Um, Diane has been a, a, an advisor to me for quite some time now. When I need some feedback, I go to certain individuals, and she's one of them. And so I appreciate uh, that she's very professional, she's very organized, and she has a lot to offer all of you in, uh, in the areas that she is strong. And just as you have areas that you're strong in and you can help other ambassadors with. So it was great to have you on here, Diane, and sharing what you are um, just a, a master at doing, which is getting organized, staying organized, and making sure that your records are all right there at your fingertips. And uh, you've all heard me say it before, it's important to treat your business as a business. And that's exactly what Diane is doing. So she knows at a snapshot how her business is doing. So um, thank you again for sharing all of that information. Okay, we're coming close to the end now and it's always my favorite part to have this celebration time where we recognize what you are doing in your business. So before we start recognizing any of the uh, different aspects here tonight, let me just say that um, I am just so pleased with the way that things are going with issue four. We are getting a lot of very positive comments. We're seeing the, the orders really happening and uh, you're keeping the warehouse hopping for sure. And so it's a very exciting time. And uh, as we go into this recognition and we, uh, we acknowledge the efforts of certain individuals, I want each and every one of you on this webinar and those of you listening to the webinar afterwards to really pat yourself on your back right now because you are here. You are an ambassador and you are helping to build Regal. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart and on behalf of the whole corporate team, we appreciate your partnership. Okay, so let's have a look at who we have here to celebrate with. Well, as I mentioned earlier, we had two groups of, of individuals, of ambassadors, who took the 21-day challenge, one in May and one in July. And so in May, we had an incentive that the individuals were working for. It was called 100 Orders in 100 Days. And so that was the aim, and that was what they were um, all working very hard to do. So we had three different categories to this incentive. If they achieved 30 to 99 orders, then they earned free catalog package, a package of 12 free catalogs, and they were invited to join us on the Unstoppable Me Advanced Training. If they did 100 or more orders in the qualification period, they get a package of free catalogs, they get a $50 worth of Regal products as a gift, and they too are invited to join the Unstoppable program. And then we have the top four in product sales who earned the Starfish Bangle as well as um, the free catalogs. So let's see who um, earned their gifts in these categories. Drum roll, please. <laughs> okay. In the 30 to 99 order submitted, we have Louisa Haddon. We have Wendy Willard. Diane Comstock. So congratulations, ladies. You reached the 30 to 99 bracket. Congratulations. And I know that as I look at your sales from that period of time in submitting those orders, could that have happened otherwise? I'm not sure because I don't have all the records of the past, but I know you've done a great job. So congratulations on that. Okay, so the uh, 100 plus orders is Dolores Realm who reached over the 100 orders in that period of time. So congratulations, Dolores. And then the top four in product sales getting the beautiful uh, starfish bangle that you see on your screen right now. We have Number four, Louisa Haddon. Number three, Wendy Willard. Number two, Diane Comstock. And number one, Dolores Rayom. So congratulations to all of you and congratulations to all the graduates because you are making a difference in your business because you're implementing the principles and the practices and the habits that you learned as a result of this program. So congratulations to each one of you.
All right, the uh, ones that were taking the program in July, your deadline for the incentive is Friday, November 18th. So make sure you're submitting those forms to me by November the 18th. Or actually, I think I gave you a couple of days thereafter to get the paperwork done and hand it over to me so that we can uh, also celebrate with you what you have done in that period of time. Okay, the August top products, you may want to take a snapshot of this with your phone uh, camera as well because it's always great to know what are the items that were really selling in the last month and you can let your customers know about that, okay? Now, most of these items are under the $17. In fact, most of them are even under the $10. So there's some great ideas for uh, those of you that are doing party plan. It gives you some great uh, game gift ideas and it's also great um, uh, stocking stuffers. All right, August promotion. These folks have climbed the ladder. They've gone from whatever level they were at last month in July and um, promoted in August to the next level. So let's have a look at these folks. Ambassador to Bronze. They were ambassador and with their sales in August, they promoted to Bronze. It means that in their accumulated sales, they are now over 500. And in alphabetical order, here is the list. Shally Sear, Victoria Colonna Swan, Christine Ellis, Valerie Filardo, Patricia Forletta, Mimi Grad, Ellen Irvine, Mary Macham, Edna McTeer, Janet Nudick, Jose Pelican, Charlene Parent, uh, Karina Waterfield and Vernon Woik. So congratulations to all of you. My apologies if I mispronounced your name. Okay, these folks have promoted from bronze to silver. That means that they are at over $1,000 in accumulated sales this year thus far. And we have Ray Bouchard, Jana Elisa Cancelier, Karen Fortier, Diane Harding, Susan Laxton, Lori Lavallee, Marge McCosco. Congratulations to all of you. And then the next section is those that promoted from silver to gold, which means that they are now over $2,000 in accumulated sales. And this is placing them into that first leadership level, which means that they now will be paid commission twice monthly instead of just once monthly. So congratulations to Brenda Fautin and Sean Wisner. Great job to everyone. You just gave yourselves a pay raise. How exciting is that? All right. So what will it take each of you to promote to the next level? Where are you right now? What do you need to achieve? For those of you that are new to this, this is your compensation plan. Again, take your a picture of this if you'd like. But whatever level you're at, in order to get to the next level, you need to reach that next level's amount. So if you're an ambassador, you need to get $500 in accumulated sales year to date in order to become bronze and have your commission increased to 15%. And the same way all the way up the ladder. So where do you want to take your business? All right, let's talk about the top 10 achievers for the month of August. We have in the 10th position, Colleen Buchanan, who is Diamond from British Columbia. Congratulations, Colleen. Number nine is Peggy. I'm sorry, Peggy, I'm not even going to try to botch that one up. Um, Diamond and in Manitoba. Congratulations, Peggy. Number eight, Cindy Cox, Platinum from Newfoundland. Wow, we're from all over the map here this month. Um, congratulations, Cindy. Number seven is Michelle Mathers, Diamond from Saskatchewan. Congratulations, Michelle. Number six, Pamela Coutu, Diamond in Ontario. Congratulations, Pamela. Wendy Franco, number five, Diamond in Ontario. Congratulations, Wendy. Number four, Sean Wisner, Silver in British Columbia. Congratulations, Sean. Drum roll for the top three. Here we go. Number three is Luella Rhodes, and she is Diamond from Saskatchewan. Congratulations, Luella. Number two is Dolores Rayom, and Dolores is a Diamond in Saskatchewan. And our number one top achiever goes to Joan Wilson, who is Diamond in British Columbia. Well, congratulations to each and every one of you. 
Great job. And Dolores, you will have, oops, I'm sorry, I put Dolores, but it's actually Joan. My apologies. Joan, um, that's not uh, really engraved on there yet, Dolores, so don't get too excited. It's actually going to be, um, oops, it's actually Joan Wilson who will be on the plaque. All right, congratulations to everyone. All right, resources that are available to you. The Google Drive is where we save a lot of the documents that you can download and use. And so the link is always available in the News and Views monthly newsletter. So that goes out on the last Friday, or sorry, the first Friday of every month. So the link is in there, but you can also get it on Facebook page as well. Okay, videos are stored in three places. Facebook group in the videos section of Regal Ambassadors Facebook group. It's also on YouTube channel for those that are not on Facebook and the Regal Academy in your sales tools of your dashboard. So there are a lot of videos there. If you're new to uh, Regal, it's a great way to get up to speed. Find out uh, what the story is on shipping and return policy and tips on how to build your business, all of that information. All right. Okay. So now we have um, the open forum. I'll leave this on the screen right now for you to uh, write down anything you need to know by way of office hours, telephone number, email addresses, and, and so on. So I'll leave that on the screen as we go into our open forum time. Okay, here's how it works for the open forum. What I am going to do now is check the comments section and see if there's anything there that we could openly ask. But if you have anything that you would like to um, post in the question box, you still have time to type something in there and I will address each and every one of them. Also, if you wanted to actually ask verbally uh, a question or make a comment, you can actually raise your hand. Um, as you see on your control panel, there's a little hand. You can see it with the four little fingers up and the, the little thumb up. That is raising of the hand. You can click on that and it'll show on my screen that you've raised your hand and then I will unmute you and you can ask that question um, verbally for everybody to hear. Okay, so I'm just going through, we have a long list here. Okay, so I don't see any raised hands at this time, so let me just go through our comments and see what we have to cover today. All right, how do e-transfers work? Does the customer send the money to me or directly to Regal or do we have to phone in? Okay, the e-transfer can be done by you or your customer. It's an opportunity for either one of you to go onto your online banking and send an e-transfer with Regal being the recipient. And so when you choose e-transfer in your checkout, when you're finishing your order and you're at the checkout point and it gives you the different payment options, e-transfer is one of those options. And it will tell you what email address to send those funds to. So if you're not familiar with how e-transfer works, how to make it happen on your online banking, go to your bank. They'll be more than happy to, to um, show you on their screen how it works and uh, what you need to do. So uh, in answer to your question, Dolores, is it you or your customer? Either one of you can do it. You don't need to, uh, to phone it in. Um, if you want to make sure we received it, you can certainly call it in and, and say, hey, I just placed the e-transfer. Now, let me just say, if you indicate that you're going to do an e-transfer, um, this goes for everyone, um, if you indicate that e-transfer is the payment method you're going to do, your order will not be processed until we receive that e-transfer. So if you are processing the e-transfer, you're in a rush to get that order, make sure you do the e-transfer right away and do call us and let us know that it's on its way and we'll be watching for it. Okay, but that email is, is checked regularly, many times throughout the day, so um, it, it will not be missed. It, it will see your e-transfer as it comes in. Okay, uh, right, Stacy Day is asking, do we charge the tax on shipping? Yes, you do, because Canada Post and FedEx charge us taxes on shipping. So, yes, you definitely um, are charging taxes on the product as well as the uh, shipping. 
All right. Um, Wendy, welcome to autumn. Well, same to you, Wendy Willard. Thank you very much. We are in the fall, but it sure, feel like, uh, it sure feels like summer still, doesn't it? It's beautiful. Okay. Uh, Stacy says, happy Monday and only three months till Christmas. Yes, that's true. Um, okay. Carol Velton says, my birthday is September 27th. Well, happy birthday, Carol. That is on Wednesday. So happy birthday. All of you on Facebook, be sure to say happy birthday to Carol on Wednesday. Okay. Do I get a discounted price for birthday? <laughs> sure. Well, that happens with some clothing stores, I understand. But no, not something we have in place right now, Carol. Sorry. Um, all right. Debbie Graham, once you add in shipping, Canada Post or FedEx, it puts people off. Have you considered a delivery service? Um, once you add in shipping, it puts people off. Okay, I, I think what you're saying is as soon as you charge a shipping cost, and I understand what you're saying, Debbie, um, because there are some companies out there that don't charge shipping or they charge a very nominal um, fee for uh, any products that are shipped. We are not there, at least we're not there now. Um, the way that we operate at uh, Regal, as I said earlier this evening, Everything that we do has to be um, beneficial for ambassadors and the company. And if we charged you the, um, if we charge you a very small amount for shipping or nothing at all, we have to recapture that cost from somewhere because it's costing us to, to ship to you. So we are a new company. We're only nine months young. And so we just simply can't afford to do that. Other large companies, the uh, you know multi-billion dollar companies can do that because they have the, uh, the funds coming from various other uh, forms of the sales and whatnot. So they can recapture that, that loss from the product um, prices, so on and so forth. So um, I hope that answers your question. But at this point, no, we do need to charge shipping. And we charge no less and no more than what uh, Canada Post and FedEx charge us. However, having said that, Debbie, if you're not aware, there are many ways in which you can save on shipping. Diane did make mention of one of them today. Um, when you have an order of 150 or more, we give you $10 off of shipping. So depending on where you're located, that could be a significant savings. And in fact, for some people, it meant no shipping cost because of the fact that it only cost ten dollars or less to ship that order to them and so um, those are that's one of the ways that you save on shipping the other thing that we recommend you do Debbie is that you charge a percentage of the product value to all of your customers so if you are combining orders from various customers um, whether you're doing that weekly or bi-weekly you let them know what date you actually order they get their order to you before then you combine all the orders and then you charge a percentage to each one of them for shipping so let's say that you have one person that's uh, ordering fifty dollars worth and you're going to charge six percent of that value for their shipping and handling. So out of the $50 order that she's placing and you're charging 6%, that means it's costing her $3, which is really a very small price to pay. She'd have to pay a lot more than that if it was going to her directly. And so that is the, uh, the way that most ambassadors are handling the shipping. So if you have any other questions on that, feel free to post some more, but uh, that's the overview of shipping. Peggy um, is asking, will Regal carry ornaments or other home decor for individuals that do not celebrate Christmas in December, like the Ukrainians and the Jewish, etc.? Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, there's a whole lot of cultures out there that celebrate Christmas at other times or celebrate their New Year at other times. And so um, make that a recommendation, Peggy. You know, if that's something that uh, would benefit your business, if you have a lot of customers who celebrate other events and you'd like to see some of the... Uh, uh, products in line with those holidays, um, send us a recommendation, customer service at regal.ca, and we take every recommendation into consideration. It goes to our marketing, to our catalog team. They look at that anytime that we're looking to uh, get the products for the, the subsequent catalog. So please do send us a recommendation, and uh, we will consider that. Okay, another question, how do we know what level we are at? Um, if you're not sure what level you're at, Debbie, you can call customer service at 905-814-7342 or you can email them at the emails that are on your screen and um, they can let you know what level you're at at this time. Okay. 
Pauline Chevrier, for shipping with existing order, I linked to orders today with Linda through email. Will they be shipped together? For shipping with existing order, yes, anything that was shipped today is still going to go through. It's just new orders tomorrow will no longer have the ability to choose those other options. So great question. Thank you. Anything that is in the uh, stream right now, so if any of you want to do that tonight, this is your last chance. Um, anything received tomorrow will not have those options. Uh, another question by Pauline, where would we get the info for what we can and can't claim on our business income tax reports? Okay, great question. Um, if you have a bookkeeper or an accountant, they know exactly what you can uh, claim as a small business owner. And there are a lot of claims. Um, in fact, if anyone on this call has a full-time job during the day, um, you could save literally thousands of dollars in taxes every year simply because you have the side business. Because there are so many things that the government allows us to claim on our income tax as a self-employed business owner. So, Pauline, I wouldn't even want to begin to list all of the things that uh, you can claim or not claim. I would suggest that you speak with a, an accountant or a bookkeeper that specializes in that. Okay, You can get some ideas from people on Facebook too, but just be cautious because unless they're qualified to give you that kind of information, you're still going to want to verify that with, with a professional. Okay, um, Joan Wilson is asking, are the PJs made in Canada? Um, should be on the website, please. Yeah, good point. And you know what? I don't know offhand whether they are made in Canada or not. So I will mention that uh, tomorrow. I've just made a note of that, and um, we'll get that up on the website. Okay, thank you, Joan. Um, and congratulations, by the way, Joan, number one. Uh, all right, Vernon Weick, uh, with existing order gone, if out of stock item, ship with next order still AM. I'm not sure what you're saying, Vernon. Um, let me just think here. Okay, so if there's an existing order that is gone and there's an out of stock item, can you have that go later with another one? I think that's what you're asking. Um, what we will typically do is you still have um, the option of having everything wait for all of the items to come. Okay, um, we will either hold the whole order, that'll be the default, um, but anything that is uh, out of stock will either go as a separate cost for you or we will put it with your next order. We are very um, cautious of, of that. Um, when we see that you order on a regular basis and there's an item coming, it shows us on our system that you are ordering, let's say, weekly or however often it is. And if there's an item coming in for you, we can quickly look at that system and see that you typically have orders coming, and, and like in a short order. So we would wait and put it into your next order. Now, that's not something we can guarantee because it is something that we do manually. And it's something that we just do out of the goodness of our heart to help you out. So what you're going to do with an out-of-stock item is, indicate it'll give you the option at the uh, checkout again um, to ship it complete or to split ship it okay all right is there a 1-800 number no there is not Debbie we do not have a uh, toll-free number again being a new company we can uh, only spend our dollars in so many places and uh, when we looked at do we do a toll-free number um, having been with many other companies I know that sometimes the toll-free numbers get abused people make numerous calls where they would be uh, more careful of, of you know more respectful of, of the uh, customer services time when it's on their own nickel and and so it's not that we want to discourage you from calling, um, and it's not that we want to be too stingy and not provide you with the service that you need. However, if it is a problem for long-distance calls, we have said this numerous times, feel free to email us and ask us to phone you. We have no problem with us in initiating that phone call. So if long-distance is a concern, feel free to email us at the emails that are on the screen there and just ask if someone can give you a call and one of the customer service reps will do that. And typically we answer your calls and your emails within 24 hours unless it's one of those pre-order times where the phones and emails are going crazy. And then we say 24 to 48 hours. 
Okay. All right. Cindy Palmatier. Hello, Cindy. Um, just for your information, I have chosen FedEx on some of my orders, and they are a no-show. FedEx is dropping the parcels off at the post office. As of this practice, I will not be choosing FedEx in the future. All right. Um, Cindy, thank you for sharing that. That is of concern. Um, could you put that in writing to an email? Because we need to let FedEx know that. That is um, likely just an issue with the FedEx driver out your way, um, and that is not acceptable. Um, you're paying for that service. You need to get that service. So I understand your hesitance to, to go to them again, um, but we need to have that in writing so that we can go to FedEx and tell them the poor service that you're getting in your area. So thank you for sharing that. Okay, Kim Russell, haven't seen any posts by the council members. What have they been working on lately? Um, council is, has been in recess, if you will, over the summer months, and we haven't resumed at this point. I am actually doing more of um, uh, individual feedback with individuals that I am working with, the council members and, and otherwise. Um, by the way, Diane Comstock was recently appointed as a new council member, and she has been one of those individuals that when I needed feedback, I could call on her and ask her. So um, council members or council um, email address is still available. You can always send your comments, your recommendations there, and um, someone will be in touch with you. So, uh, Kim, I hope that that answers your question. Um, Vernon, you're saying sorry, yes. Okay, I, I think the yes is I got your question correct. I'll leave it at that. If you have any more, you know where to find me. We talk to each other quite often. So um, you can send me that by email or private message. Okay, Pauline Chevrier, any news on the missing catalogs from personalized lists? Um, if you've reported that in, Pauline, that there was any personalized um, catalogs missed, that they hadn't arrived, then um, follow up with customer service and see if there's any update on that for you in particular. I know that we did have a neighborhood mail was slow going. It didn't get out as fast as it should have. And we were in touch with our Canada Post rep as well as our printer. Fred was personally involved with that because we had a number of people reporting that um, their, well actually it was a personalized mail uh, as well as neighborhood mail where they were sending them to, they were not received, and I think it was going into the second week since it had gone um, live or since we had released the catalog. So um, I hear what you're saying, Pauline, that it was a slow go. I thought that everyone was receiving them now. We were getting some calls at the end of last week saying that they had finally begun to receive them. So if you are still waiting on some that are not received, Pauline or anyone else on here, um, contact customer service and let us know because uh, we are on it. Fred is personally making those phone calls because we won't mess around with that kind of service that you've paid for. Okay. All right. Cindy Palmatier, yes, I will send the email. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. And I think that is it. So let me just see if there are any hands raised at this time. No. Okay. Well, folks, it's been a great time together. I know that we've covered a lot of information. I really appreciate everybody's feedback. And it's been great to have you all here on the webinar learning together. So um, let me just see. Is there one more here? I'm seeing one more. Uh, yeah. Will the new back office allow us to enter multiple credit cards without calling customer service? And that question was actually from Diane Comstock. So Diane, you will love this answer. Yes, it does have that capability. How exciting is that? Okay. All right. On that sweet note, thank you all. Have a great evening and we'll talk again real soon. Bye for now.